Tag the Yield, August Tal Folcherov, is Mission Skelly Vyug. Hello, and you're very welcome. I am the little storyteller, and it is Patreon Insider Time. Um, first of the month, which means we're looking at a, a brand new story for our close and committed club members over on patreon.com forward slash Dagda, where I write kind of reinterpretations of Irish lore and Irish kind of folklore and mythology and kind of just take the excerpts of what we have from these ninth century texts and try and expand them based on my knowledge of the Irish culture, based on my understanding of like, you know, Irish history, mythology and everything else. Um, so today's story is called The Men of the Goddess and is available for the patrons at the moment. But I'd like to share with you here the inspiration for the story. And for this, I'm, I'm going directly to a translation of what's known as the, the Second Battle of Moitura, or the Cath of Moitura, um, from, this one is, let me just double check, there's two main kind of translations that I work from, one by Whitley Stokes and the other by Gray, um, and this is, this is the Whitley Stokes translation. So if you're looking for that, you're able to find it on ucckelt.ie, which is a free race resource from University College Cork, where a lot of these um, translations are available to be able to go through. So if you are familiar with it, you can go in and it's section 83 or page 83 that we're looking at here. Um, yeah, sorry, 82 to 83, page 82 to 83 um, for this small segment. So I'm gonna read it out to you. Um, so we're dealing with the period where Nuada has been restored as king and Lu has arrived into the Hall of Tara and by pro proof of his many skills and talents, Nuda has kind of decided to swap seats with Lou and to give over the kingship of Ireland to the newcomer. So it reads as follows. Now Nuda, when he beheld the warrior's many powers, considered him Savil Donok, um, and could put away from them the bondage which they suffered from the Fomorians. So they held a council concerning the warrior. This is the decision which Nuda came to change seats with the warrior. So Sabil Donach went to the king's seat and the king rose up before him till 13 days had ended. So Sabil Donach is a reference to Lou in this instance, which is many kind of interlinked skills. Um, so the text continues. Then on the morrow, he met with the two brothers, even Dagda and Oma, on Gralach Dalad, and his brothers Gwivnu and Dean Kecht were summoned to them. A full year were they in that secret converse, wherefore Gralach Dalad is called Amron of the men of the goddess. Therefore the wizards of Ireland were summoned to them, and their leeches, and charioteers, and smiths, and farmers, and brehens. They held speech with them in secret. Then Nuda inquired of the sorcerer, whose name was Mathgan, what power he could yield. He answered that through his contrivance, he would cast the mountains of Ireland on the Fomorians and roll their summits against the ground. And he declared to them that the 12 chief mountains of the land of Erin would support the two of the Danon in battle for them, to wit, Shlievlieg and Denon Ullod and the Morn Mountains, and Bri Ruri and Shlieve Bluem and Shlieve Shnachti, Slemish and Bleem Shlieb and Nefton and Shlieve Mahu. Bel Belgodon and Siegis and Kruokana Agla. So my pronunciations might be a little bit uh, rough there, but a lot of words in this instance, like Schlieff, uh, there's multiple spellings of it, but that's the Irish word for mountain and still is today. Um, then he asked the cupbearers what power he could yield or wield. He answered that he would bring the 12 chief locks of Ireland before the Fomorians and they would not find water therein whatever thirst might seize them. These then are those lochs, Jurgloch, Loch Lumnig, Loch Corrib, Loch Ray, Loch Mask, Strangford Loch, Loch Leg, Loch Neag, sorry, Loch Foil, Loch Gara, Loch Ragged, Marloch. They would betake themselves to the 12 chief rivers of Ireland, even Bush, Boyne, Ba, Nem, Lee, Shannon, Moy, Sligo, Urn, Thin, Liffey, Shure, and they will all be hidden from the Fomorians, so that they will not find a drop therein. Drink shall be provided to the men of Aaron, though they abide in battle to the end of seven years. 
Then, said Frigol, of son of Mamas, their druid, I will cause three showers of fire to pour on the faces of the Fomorian host, and I will take out of them two-thirds of their valour, and their bravery, and their strength, and I will bind their urine in their own bodies and in the bodies of their horses. Every breath that the men of Ireland shall exhale will be an increase of valour and bravery and strength to them. Though they abide in battle till the end of seven years, they will not weary in any wise. Said the Dagda, the power which ye boast, I shall wield it all by myself. It is thou art the Dagda, said everyone. Wherefore, henceforth, the name Dagda adhered to him. So this is the section of the text that um, inspired the, the story for today, because as a, a Dagda Bard, as a person who kind of focuses on the two of the Danans specifically in the Irish lore and my patron deity on Dagda more, the, the big Dagda, this is one of the very fascinating time frames for him because we're dealing with a, a chieftain who has always been with the people. He came out of Murias, he brought with him the cauldron, which was one of the four great treasures of the two of the Danon. But fascinating enough, the cauldron is called the cauldron of the Dagda. But he's not named until the Dagda until years later when they're setting up for the second battle of Moitura. So is it that the story, like it, it's one of those kind of contextual errors maybe that people have questions around and is it the same individual a lot of cases yes or is the dagda a title is it like a titular thing that someone is or becomes or is declared as the dagda and in this instance we have this war council we have all of the notables all of the the, the big people coming together all the main heroes former kings oma his brother the champion of the two of the Danon, and they just turn around and straight up say yep you're the good god you're the good god of druidry all of the stuff that they promise to do, all of these other people of rank and of note and of power just agree that if Dagda's saying he'll take care of it, they don't need to do anything else because it's taken care of. So it's an interesting segment of the text. And a big part of what I do is to try and look into things a little bit further, trying to take my relationship with the Dagda and my understanding with him as someone who I, I view as the patron god that I work for with. Um, depending on the day, for or with. But it's, it's fascinating to consider it from his perspective. You know, to actually take it into an individual, a character, a, a, a god, a person. Because uh, if we take it as a member of a tribe, a chieftain of the tribe, he arrives into this land, he fights the first battle of Moitura to establish the dominance or, or the right to exist, really, on the island of his people. So they take ownership from the Fir Bullock. There's this exchange, but it's not a war of eradication. It's not a war of, you know, genocide. You know, it is an agreed battle within the confines of Moitura where there's even an exchange of technology. The Fir Bullock have javelins, the Tula Danan have spears. So in this first battle of Moitura, there's this honorable agreement where they fight during the day. At the end of every day, they retire and, you know, they deal with their wounded and then they come at the battle again for the next day. The second battle of Moishura is a much different experience because it's the arrival of invaders coming from out the ancestral enemy, the Fomorians of the Nemedians, which was the Firbolag and the two of the Danon are both descended from the sons of Nemed. And the sons of Nemed actually fled Fomorian oppression from Ireland in order to establish their tribes elsewhere. So it's like this coming back around of the story where you know the age-old enemies must be faced again to find balance to find restoration and so if we put our view if we put ourselves in that experience if we put it in like you know you're a war veteran you've survived the first war you you battled on the, the battlefield yourself and now having thought it to be over having thought you've found a good king in Bress who is half a Mori and half to a and could bring balance between the two tribes it's all fallen apart. You know, instead of having peace, rest, respite and restoration, you have a broken unity. You have, you know, bias for, for, for Mauryans from the king. You have heavy censure and levies placed against two of the Danon in favour of the Firbolli. You have the wealth of Ireland, sorry, the Fomorians. You have the wealth of Ireland being taken from the two of the Danon out across the water again and given to some other tribe, given out to the Fomorians. Um, so culturally speaking, as 
an Irish person, this is almost like the same kind of things have always happened to Ireland. Like, you know, the bounty uh, of Ireland being taken away and taken for other tribes until the Irish people stand up for themselves, until the people of the land say, no, enough is enough. And if it has to go to a conflict, it does. But the challenge there is surviving that conflict and like managing through it. Like we know in the first battle of Maitre, the Dagda broke the lines on the left and opened a gap in the Firbolic force for 150 people to follow behind him. Actual quote from the lore. So now he's staring down the, the turn of a new war. Not just a war for ascension, not just a war for his position of his people, but for survival. The Dagda himself was placed in um, kind of in bonded servitude, you know, so he was still due pay. He was still entitled to like his his meals, etc. And he does get paid at the end of it by Bress to build Rathbress, to build the fortresses, to dig the ditches of Tara. Um, but it's not balance like he's one of the chieftains of the two Dan. he's one of the heroes like he is this very powerful druid and he's re- re- like demeaned and put down into like digging the ditches so you have all of this conflicting emotion conflicting kind of changes the dagda himself is um accused by breasts of murder of a fomorian even though he didn't actually murder was death by misadventure um in most cases depending on your perspective but it's still impactful on him as he has to kind of move beyond those things to again face into another war for the survival of his people and so you have all of these very powerful individuals the groups the druids the sorcerers everyone kind of promising we'll do all this we'll do all this and then Dagda just says listen everything you've promised leave it to me I'll take care of it and they say yes they don't disagree with him. They're like, yeah, you got that. Hands off. So if that's not a fascinating insight into the power and the position of this god, this deity of ancient Irish folklore, tradition, and, you know, not even ancient. Like, I, I bear a Dagda mark upon my wrist. You know, I refer to him as my personal god, and that's someone I, I work for as a, a healthy example of, like, power, masculinity, um, but also gentleness, you know, one of his other names is Olaher, which is the father of many, and we know he has foster children, so it's not just like children of his blood, he's he's the dad to everybody, <laughs> um, and like his magical items, yes, he has a club which can kill and restore life, but the other thing, that cauldron, that famous cauldron, it says no company goes unsatisfied, so there ain't no party like a dagda party, you go there, you always enjoy yourself, you always kind of leave fulfilled, um, and the of course, the third magical item is his harp, on which he would play the three strains of the, the harper skill to allow people to, to grieve. The, the, the gall tray, which is the, the wailing strain. Then there's the gyan tray, which is the laughing strain, the joyful strain. And then there's the soon tray, which is the, the soothing sleeping strain. And all of these things are within the power of this god. So he's not just a heavy hitting, masculine, physical form, like he's actually a, a balanced, gentle deity, as well as having the power to break a line and slaughter 150 guys to make room on a battlefield. Flip side of that is he's aware of what emotional intelligence is. He's aware of how important it is to feel your feelings, be they joy, sadness, or restful sleep. Um, so this is the guy I work for. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about the Dagda and I talk about him a lot. Um, and those are the stories that I tell. So I take those segments of the lore and I extrapolate on them. I break it down and I kind of take that one step further in regards to trying to make it accessible, trying to kind of open the narrative for us to have a better understanding or even to find a question that may lead us to our own connection to deity or our own forms of spirituality. So. As I said, patreon.com forward slash Dagda is where you will find my work if you're interested in supporting it on those stories. Um, As ever, I do these videos here twice a month. So start of the month for a new story, but also mid-month for the audio recordings of the stories I've written over in Patreon. But I always like to try and give this insider view and tell you what what it is that inspires my work. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe if you're interested in following more of this information. As I said, you won't be getting more than like one or two, but I do have other videos here on YouTube. And the plan is to probably do more around the academia and the lore of ancient Ireland to 
make it more accessible or as accessible as I can in, in my work. Um, but as ever, Gaurav Mahagas, thank you very, very much to my patrons and also to you who are watching and hopefully enjoying this video. And until next time, Slán. Goodbye.